Alright, welcome back to another episode of Another Bourbon Show. Uh, this week, we are going to be drinking another barrel pick. This is another one that I've been I've had for quite a while. Uh, and once again, it goes back to the fact that for the longest time, we weren't we intentionally were not doing barrel picks. Uh, so I've been sitting on this one for a while and decided to, to share it. And uh, I'm excited for you guys to taste this one. Uh, tonight, we're going to be doing a barrel pick of Rebel. It's a distiller's collection. This particular one was picked by the St. Louis Bourbon Society and um uh, i forget rhww is rick house there's a bar over in st charles area called the rick house i believe i don't know uh i'll figure that out at some point and but anyway yeah so this is a st louis bourbon society one uh this one comes in at 113 proof 56.5 alcohol by percent uh by volume uh this one was barreled in 2014 and i think this was a 2021 pick so about a seven year about a seven year barrel um before we do anything else steven what do you think of that label well you know it's really really similar to ezra brooks uh yeah. or the ezra like distillers collection anyway and um i think i probably gave that label like a seven or eight i'm not sure but i would put this somewhere in there as well I think I like the colors a little bit better here, but honestly, they're both they're both good, um, and I think they they look like they fit in the line uh, because they're so similar overall. But it has all the stuff that I typically look for, where you can easily tell that this is a pick. You could tell that's you know from it saying Distillers Collection, but even if you're not necessarily familiar with that, you've got that label on the bottom. You got the stick around the side, and uh, I think that the font looks really good here. I think it was a good call to go with an entirely different font for like Rebel as opposed to like when you look at the Ezra one. Uh, so yeah, I think this also fits in like a seven or eight-ish range. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Luxro stuff, but I've actually never had Rebel. Um, I've only had the Ezra stuff. So uh, yeah. I'm, You've I'm never excited. had Rebel at all? I haven't, no. Interesting. Okay. I Brian, have, have you ever had Rebel? Unfortunately, yes. Oh, unfortunately other things <laughs> rude rude okay I'll go back back to you steven i didn't mean to interrupt i'm sorry oh no i was just gonna say i've always it's always been i've always been aware of it but it's just one of those things that i've never picked up a bottle or been out somewhere with it that had it where i could try it so yeah i've been looking okay. forward to this one okay ryan you said that you have had it and when you say unfortunately was it that you did not like it no, it's just more of a business thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's what I kind of thought. It's one of your petty responses, not a... Of course. Of course, yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, bottle oh, looks the bottle looks nice, though. I like the red. Okay. Very similar to the Ezra. Um, at last time, you put them back to back, and yeah, besides Rebel, Rebel and Ezra, the different words, it's pretty much the same exact bottle. Yeah. So yeah. it smells nice. I'm excited to okay. try it. Okay. Well, if it, like, so if you guys aren't aware, uh, this is a weeded bourbon. Uh, so I don't know if it comes in at, it's probably 67, 67 corn, 15% wheat. I don't know. I'm not even going to try, uh, but it is a weeded, weeded bourbon. So uh, keep that in mind whenever we're, we're sipping it. Um, but what do you say we jump in? Let's do it. Cheers, do guys. It. Cheers. Uh, you can only find those those bottles, barrel picks for 35, 40 bucks. Even they're they're inexpensive barrel picks too. It does have a good nose. It's like a... Yeah, I think you can pick up on it being weeded very easily. It's got a, a softer scent to it. I was gonna um, say sweet, even. Like yeah, kind of a it's typical bourbon notes again that you would pick up, but there's just uh, some sweetness to it. It's nice, almost like chocolate and cherry, like a chocolate covered cherry or strawberry or something on the nose. And again, keep in mind that this is 113 proof. Because to me, the nose does not say 113 at all. To me, the nose says 100 at tops. Yeah. So, you know, and I don't even think it was weeded, but I just got a flashback to try and brother's bond on here which of course was only 80 proof 
but mm-hmm. that's what I pick up on the nose. It's a very similar nose to me. I don't, it was locked away in the back of my brain. I hadn't thought about what that smelled like until <laughs> this moment, but it, it kind of has like a sweet, very, very mellow nose. Mellow. Interesting that you would call it mellow. Very interesting. Why <laughs> on earth would, oh, look at that shirt. Look at that. That shirt, that's a, that's a 10.0 shirt right there. No, it isn't. A ten point is a ten. A ten point oh shirt on a one point oh man. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's not a ten point oh. You know, I had the I had a thought today, where I knew you were going to say some smart shit when I wore this shirt, but I was like, oh, I I got to get out of the way. I like this shirt. I'm going to wear this shirt. And but it's I 10. was thinking, whenever you're like, it's a ten, it's a ten, or whatever you're going to say, I was like, it's like people who like their favorite actor. Like, Mellowcorn fans are like people who are fans of Danny DeVito. And you're just like, oh, sexiest actor in the world, Danny DeVito. It's like, <laughs> you know he's fucking not. He's not, okay? You know he's fucking not. And it's just a joke. It's, it's a lovable person. And that's what Mellowcorn is. It's a lovable guy. But you know he's fucking, he's fugly, okay? He's a weird amalgamation. And yet, it's perfect. It's perfect and everything. You love everything about it. It's a treasure. That's how I it's feel exactly about what it's supposed to be. You're it's just finally coming in around every to that possible way. That, that's how yeah, even it's a perfect three looking bottle. It's a perfect bottom shelf looking bottle that'll give you a good time. Unreal, dude. I just muted him. We don't need to listen to this <laughs> anymore. This is. <laughs> This is absolute is like a, bullshit. A permanent mute button. Like he can never come off of it. I don't think so. Oh, he's raising his hand. He can unmute himself. I don't know. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> did I just get the first mute in show history? Because it's so that's I don't think so. I think I did I, it to I think Nolan, that's the first <sighs> could be. I better not. I got the first. You better give Ryan one right now just to even things out. Because I mean, I love Mellow Corn, dude. I'm going to wait until he says something dumb, then I will. So starting, starting give me 10 now, minutes. Apparently. Yeah. Give me 10 minutes and I will. Okay. So back to Rebel. I got Who to also changed their name in the last few years from Rebel Yell to Rebel. That's so correct. If you didn't know that, now you know. And I think it was because there were, uh, what, hints of the Confederacy in the name? Yeah, I guess so. I think that's why they changed so. it. The liberals win again. <laughs> hey, did you know that uh, the song by uh, Eddie Vedder? No. Um, Rebel Yell. So- the song Rebel Yell. Oh, uh, the British dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what's his name? Money, money. That guy. He was in the wedding singer on the plane. What is his name? Hold on. <laughs> Billy Idol. Billy Idol. Oh. Yeah, Billy Idol. That song is about the whiskey. Just like yeah. taking away all of the possibilities it 100 percent is about the whiskey and this was keith richards's favorite well i guess it's still i don't know if he still drinks but keith richards favorite whiskey was rebel yell oh really i didn't know that yeah yes sir how do you know that look he's said he's talked about it in interviews you can look it up he's talked about it before who what's his name keith richards the guitarist for the stones oh i yeah i just I'm being dumb tonight. <laughs> I did not know. That. I wish I could do a Johnny Carson impression. And every time, you know, I could say when I don't know something, I did not know that. So according to The Guardian, Keith Richards gave up drinking almost. He got fed up with it. December 14th, 2018, Richards, at that time 74, who has said his favorite tipple for decades has been Jack Daniels. Sounds like you're a goddamn liar. Uh, as I then here's a story about New Orleans. As I said, Keith ordered some sort of bourbon that he we didn't serve. 
I think you're full of shit, dude. This is embarrassing. It is. Did you Google Rebel Yell Keith Richards? Did you do that? No. no you should I shouldn't that. have to. Did you watch? Now I'm like, doing. Did you watch a Keith like? Did you watch a Rebel commercial that Keith Richards was in? He's like, I always drink this shit. Then he got his paycheck, walked out of there, never fucking talked about it again. And you're like, oh, what a cool interview. And then they had a Colgate interview right after that. Keith Richards Papa of John's the Rolling interview. Stones was once known to be hey, an avid drinker of Rebel home. Yell. In fact, Billy Idol has said in his episode of VH1 Storytellers that his hit Rebel Yell was inspired upon joining Richards, Mick Jagger, and Rod, Ron Wood in taking swigs from a bottle of Rebel Yell at a gathering they all attended. He liked the sound of the brand name and said he recalled that he actually asked if they, Jagger and Richards, had no objections to his use of the brand name for a future song title. I've got it now. Little did they know. But he was an avid drinker of Rebel Yell, but it wasn't his favorite. Okay, That's sorry, different. Sorry, dude. So Spantic. you get muted. He's muted. This is such bullshit. <laughs> This is off to a swimming start. Dan I'm, has pulled the podcast to a screeching halt two different times, muted both of us. We're only like 15 minutes in. So we haven't even talked you know about the, the fucking whiskey yet. You know what this is? This is the night where if if we didn't have to like log off early, we would get shitty drunk. <laughs> this is Probably. one of those nights. And then Ryan would be hissing sitting down into some can and he'd be like i'm like keith richards right we're like we're like the three of us are like those guys and i'm like keith richards <laughs> <laughs> okay so <laughs> what do you think about this? <laughs> what do you think about this rebel barrel pack i haven't even tried it yet dude you haven't no i have i've been sitting on a little bit um i it's a what do you very, think dude it's a lot of, there's a lot of warmth. The yeah. hug is super prevalent. Maybe one of the most prevalent hugs we've had in a while because it, it just holds on so long. And that and I truly mean a hug. Like when you think of a hug, this is what it is. It's that very low burn in the back of your throat that burns almost the wrong word. It's just a warmth, you know? And uh, it's so prevalent that it almost makes you think that it it's it's not weeded. There's not a lot of weeded stuff that I've had. That feels quite like this, you know. Um, so it's it has it packs a surprising punch. You do get that proof here, and I would say one thirteen is even like a little bit low. Um, but again, it doesn't doesn't burn necessarily. It's just warm. I agree, and it doesn't like burn my tongue with like a high proof either, right? Like a lot of times with a high proof, I get a lot of sting on my tongue, a lot of sting on my cheeks, and then m much more of a burn whereas this is warm all around and it's a long lasting warmth but i get a lot of sweetness and character beyond just proof when it's in my mouth and on my tongue incredibly sweet at first too very sugary cherry um i mean i know a lot of weeded bourbons are, are sweet i mean it, it definitely levels out to uh, like the baking spices and everything um that that finish is really nice on it but trying it right off the start i was almost like punching the face with like a sugary sensation it was it's really nice yeah i will say though that this is not from experience this is something that i'm picking on up on right now that this is the type of whiskey that would be really bad to get drunk on in my opinion, like I would, I do, would not want to continue drinking this to intoxication. Why not? I feel like it would give me an upset stomach for some reason. I, I, I feel like it would give me like a, this would give me a tendency to vomit if I got too drunk on it. Whereas other whiskeys, they're not like throw up drunks. I feel like this one would be a vomit drunk. Yeah, I can see that just because of how prevalent that warmth is. It's almost akin to, and I brought this up, the similar feeling before with other whiskeys, but it's almost like that Jaeger feel, where it's like you feel it all the way down every inch, and then 
as you get drunk and you're taking bigger swigs, that becomes a little more hard. That becomes harder and harder to stomach, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that's a weird way to describe it. And so, like, you know what that is, folks? That's anybody who's listening or watching. That's one of the notes that we give that ain't no other podcast on the planet going to give. This is not a good vomit whiskey. <laughs> they don't say that. We do. <laughs> yeah, it's not It's not what you would classify as an easy sipper. Um, and no, it's not. It's, it's a, uh, it has some punch to it, and it's a punch that doesn't go away right away, even though it's not this immediate punch in your face. It's, uh, it lingers a bit. Yeah, this is a, I'm going to, I'm going to drink you for all, like, this is going to be my only glass tonight of this. I might drink something else afterwards, but I'm not drinking another glass of this. Keep thinking about that strand of hands from last week. That good. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah, it's very good. I mean, that's going to be. That might be the best one of the year. Like I, like we said, it might not get any better than that. Yeah, I mean that's better than this, and this is good. But I still like the strain hands more, and they're different styles. But I enjoyed that one a lot. Hey, did you drink an apricot yet, or have an apricot yet? No, or drink one. Oh yeah, no and no. <sighs> Dude, you got to get on that, bro. I, I know. Hold on. You ever had a grape? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking, man. Yes. I've How come you grapes. didn't just say yes immediately? It was weird. <laughs> of course, you didn't think grapes. about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I drink a lot of wine and shit, too. So I'm like, yes, I've had grapes. Wait, do you think wine counts when I say, have you had a grape? No, but I've had a lot of grapes. <laughs> okay. I'm, all right. I've had a lot of grapes. What about like okay. vegetables? Are vegetables like an uncharted territory? <laughs> I feel like I've eaten more vegetables than fruit. That mm. surprises me. For sure. Okay, we're going to go through a list here. Apple. Oh, yeah. Apricot. No. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Uh, Blackberry. No. All right, let me start a different list. (laughs) (laughs) I think blackberries. I've had had blueberry. I've had a bunch of berries. I've never had a blackberry, though. Yeah, blueberry. blueberry. Yes. All those fucking Cherry. berries taste basically the same. Yeah. What's the other one, Dan? Cherry. Yes. Coconut. Unfortunately. Okay. Disgusting. Uh, screwed, screwed him out of a business deal. Yeah. I, th- <laughs> I think this one goes without saying it's a no, but a durian. No idea what that even is. Okay. <laughs> Dragon. Have you, fruit. have you heard of it, Stephen? Yes, it's it's yeah. a, an infamous fruit because it's also one of the what, stinkiest. What is it called again? Foods. It's called a durian. D U R I A N. Google it while I'm. Have you ever had a dragon fruit? No, it's been in front of me before. Okay. What about a fig? Yes. Okay. Fig Newtons count. Sure. Gooseberry. Right. No. I didn't think so. You've had a gooseberry? You've each yeah, had a gooseberry? Yeah, I've had gooseberry pie. They're very tart. I think very I've had bitter. a gooseberry jam, but I'm not sure on that. Have you had a guava? Yes. Jackfruit? Yes. Plum? Yes. Kumquat? <laughs> you say kumquat? Yes, you are. Uh, lemon? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's tart. Lime. Yeah. Mango. Yes. Watermelon. Yes. Mulberry. No. I've I've not had a mulberry. I've been on Mulberry Street in New York. Orange. Yes. Papaya. No, it's been in front of me and I didn't want to do it. Passion fruit. Yes. Peach. Yes. Pear. Yes. Persimmon. No. Pineapple. Yes. Pine berry. No. Pomegranate. Yes, a lot. I was going to say, I was like, being with Mahin, if you'd never had 
pomegranate. Like I feel like they put fucking pomegranate or pomegranate seeds and everything. Yeah, you know, oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> they. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Well, I, I mean, I think that's okay. I, what can I just not say they anymore? Anyway? Starfruit. No. Strawberry. Yes. Tamarind. Yes. Nah. -uh. It's a, the, tamarind. It, it's a popular fruit in India. Okay. Yuza. No. Uh, tamarind Yuzu, is also sorry. used in a lot of uh, like cocktails. It is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. I've got a list. I'm going to Instacart you a couple of these motherfuckers, and you're going to do them blind. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of fruit I've never even heard of. And that was just a, that was just a quick list I pulled up. Um, pomegranate wasn't even on it. So um, <laughs> there, yeah, there were other fruits that we'll get to at some point. I don't think I've ever had a strawberry without it being covered in chocolate, though. Really? Yeah. It's kind of, that shocks me. If that's the case. Yeah. Texture. It's <laughs> kind of hairy. It's kind of gross. You know, <laughs> Raisin Bran cereal. The other day I was having some Raisin Bran crunch and I was like, Am I getting older? Because now, not only am I eating raisin bran, but I'm I'm like, there's a little too many raisins in this. You know, like oh, they, see, I would never be that way. Because they always advertise, they're like, you know, they have like this. Their mascot is like the sun or whatever that has the like scoops of raisins, and they're two scoops, their two scoops, right? Yeah. But I feel like that you always end up with because of the nature of the cereal, the raisins always fall to the bottom of the bowl. So you at least have to have the technique where you scoop fully to the bottom because otherwise you end up with when you get towards the bottom of the cereal either you have to pour another bowl or you're going to end up with a bunch of raisins just at the bottom you know you're going to have only raisins and milk and it's just they already put sugar on top of the raisins so yeah. it's a very sweet burst you know of flavor and uh, i was like they're putting a little too many raisins in the raisin brand now <laughs> And then yeah, I, I've never said that. And then I upped my contributions to my 401k. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately checked out if I'd maxed out my Roth for the year. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cereal I would never eat. Really? Yeah. I'm a little surprised uh, at that. It is. Have you ever tried it, though? No. I what think it's one I, like. Is it like Frosted Flakes with raisins in it? Because that's what it looks like. Kind of is. No, but, it's, uh, I'm talking about like bran flakes with raisins in it. I'm talking about uh, raisin bran crunch. The crunch is like other level good. Like that's almost kids cereal level. Because uh, have you ever had like honey bunches of oats or anything like that, Ryan? Like yeah. oats that are held together by like brown sugar, basically. Yeah. That's kind of what like this is with bran flakes and then sugary raisins. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. It's, well, it's okay. basically that sounds cereal better. that ha still has fiber content. <laughs> okay. It, you would like it. I gotta think. have that. Gotta have that fiber. Yeah. Gotta have that fiber. I ate a lot of beans. That's that's why I eat beans. It's, but I like honey funny. bunches of oats too. That is a good one. Yeah. I just what do you don't, think about cinnamon toast breakfast. crunch? I can't do cinnamon, so I'm out. But but uh, otherwise, I would probably like. I mean, cinnamon is good. I think. It gets soggy too quick. I agree. So it's like, I really like it. And I always pour myself enough where I'm like, all right, I'll be able to finish this before it gets soggy. It never happens. And then you never do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, like I love like Count Chocula. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I love that one. It sucks. It's not available year round anymore. Um, Cat and Crunch is great. I grew up on a cereal called Quisp. I don't know if you Never guys ever it. had it. It my dad grew up. Um, it's kind of like a precursor to Cat and Crunch, but better. They have standard Cat and Crunch, but I think it was popular in Chicago and the suburbs in like the seventies and eighties. I don't even know if it's around anymore. But my dad would find it at a grocery store. He'd be like, "Holy shit!" And he'd buy like ten of them, <laughs> you know, and give them to all of us. But that was a really good one too. So I always liked Captain Crunch, except for like it just destroys the roof of your mouth. Yeah, and like, like, and that, and that's something that I truly avoided it because of that. But it, but the taste is fantastic. Yeah, to me, like Fruity Pebbles is like that. That's number one. Fruity Pebbles are good. Like, like not today, right? Like, I'm not going to go to the store and buy myself Fruity Pebbles 
maybe like once a year, twice a year. I'm like, yeah, let me get some fruity fruity pebbles. I always treat wish myself. those. I always wish the flakes were as big as like, um, like frosted flakes, though, because but you can't do the rice. I know, but but that's the thing is like I just didn't like having them smaller. I get I get why. I liked um uh, You like complaining about things that you can't change, dude. Just accept it. <laughs> accept things for what they are. Quit trying to change shit. Yeah, it's probably I think we're getting to something. <laughs> <laughs> um what about uh what about like mini wheats? I always was like Oh no. I was like, no. that does not look like something you can eat. Mm-mm. Like I feel like can't you have it. to let those soak in milk so that's edible. Do we want to rate it? Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Uh, it's gotten better as I drank it, like a lot of stuff. Um, I think <clears throat> my key for enjoying this, my maximum enjoyment, was just to drink it pretty quick and get drunk quick. <laughs> that was that was the key because I didn't love it from the onset, and I don't think it was a super easy sipper. Uh, but it does hide that proof pretty well, even with the warmth. So you can get drunk off this guy. That's it's easy to do. Oh, yeah. Um, like accidentally, even. But I'm going to say, I'm going to come in pretty low here, actually, because I didn't, I I had high expectations. I, I like Ezra a lot, and this did not meet those to me. I like Ezra quite a bit more, as it turns out. And I am just going to give this guy a straight seven point oh. Um, I think it's I think it's a fair whiskey, but I almost gave it into the sixes because there's just a, it's mainly warmth to me. It's it's there's not a lot of interesting flavor. It's it's a good nose. It's a really good nose. I think but that's in my scaling probably the the lowest criteria that you get through the process. And then the the most of it is is the is the palate. And then a little bit more on finish. And really the nose is great. The actual experience drinking it on the palate was pretty lacking to me. It was just kind of muted, typical notes. And I didn't get a lot of the same taste that I like to get out of like weeded whiskeys. Um, I think like a Maker's 46, for instance, is like a more flavorful better bottle that you don't have to wait for a pick for um and then and then the finish was mainly just warmth it wasn't like uh a lot of flavor came out of it or anything so yeah it was overall it was kind of a disappointing bottle to me um it is not bad by any stretch but i would have a hard time recommending it to anybody in particular um it's still quite a bit above a jim beam white label for me so that's why it comes in at that but yeah 7.0 i'd like to go next if i can so uh, I'm going to disagree with Stephen on a number of things. And the the first part of it is going to be because, again, this is like a $35 or $40 bottle that comes in at 113 proof. And I think that when you take the price into consideration That's true. That's true. for that proof, and we're not talking about a 55 to 60, like this is a, this bottle is less expensive than a bottle of Maker's Mark, 46 um even as a barrel pick it's it's less expensive than a bottle of makers 46. um and i know for the first year of this podcast i consistently harped don't take price into consideration but we all agree that you cannot not take price into consideration and i think that when you're talking about a 35 dollars bottle at 113 proof the The nose is fantastic. I think that I enjoy the palate, actually. Um, I think that the palate has a lot of sweetness to it, a lot of character to it. Um, It doesn't have all of the notes that I would love for it to have. And it's not as complex as something that's going to be a higher rating than I'm going to give it. But I do think it's really well-rounded. And I do think that the finish is long and that it's got a really nice hug to it i get a lot of different characters and changes in the finish after i sip it as well which is nice i enjoy that 
Uh, so taking all of that into consideration, it's not like I'm going to blow your rating out of the water here, Stephen, but I am going to go with a 7.8. Um, and a lot of, I think that a big difference between your 7.0 and my 7.8 really boils down to the expectations of a bottle based on it being a 35 to $40 bottle. If this was a $50 bottle, or 55 in that range, I would probably come down closer to a 7.0 or a 7.2. But for 35 to 40 bucks, I think it's pretty hard to beat. So I go 7.8. Yeah, piggybacking off what you both said. I mean, I, I do feel like it was lacking just a little bit, especially when you compare it to the Ezra, which I think was in the eights for all of us, right? I think so. Pretty damn near, damn near close. Probably. I think probably in between probably. seven, eight, and eight too. I really like that, like corn sweetness, that cherry sweetness that you got right in the start, and it did mellow out nice. But it's like a very thick whiskey, um, and maybe that's kind of what you guys were getting at. Like this would be a bad one to get drunk on because you might throw up. Like just the whole texture of it. I wasn't. I'd have a sip and I wasn't going back to it right away. You know, I'd give, I'd give myself three or four minutes between drinks. Um, and I liked all the flavors. It was just, the mouthfeel was very heavy, um, which, you know, can be good, but I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just the night tonight. And I, I drank a little bit yesterday, which, which <laughs> could have some kind of effect, but it really lingers there and it lets you know, that you just drank this whiskey. Um, I'm going to bridge the gap. I'm going to go 7.4. Had all the flavors I like. I mean, that sweetness from the start, I was like, oh man, I love this sweetness. I hope it lasts. And it's about a half second and then it's gone and you don't taste that sweetness again. And I really wish you did. Um, because right when it right when it hits your mouth, it's like, oh man, this is awesome. And um, not saying that it didn't live up to to the height or the expectation from that first sip but i wish it was less heavy and more sweet so 7.4 <laughs> I need to rewatch hey. that. Hey, what do you say we rate this? How about you rate this, dude? Ryan, let's whoa, you and whoa, I, whoa, whoa. let's plan to go through a breakup and then get together and then watch uh, Eternal Sunshine and get drunk. <laughs> you want to do it, dude? <laughs> that sounds like a great night, right? Like that sounds like a lot. Like we would have to torch our current setups, but a lot of healing would take place that yeah. night. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did that in college by myself. <laughs> this is Evan Williams. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah. Evan, <laughs> Evan Williams, honey, dude. Hell Drink yeah. the whole bottle. <laughs>